slip through. And I had one slip through, and it said I'm overdue for shipping it by three days now. It was because it was probably an offer or someone pending, and they came in. Am I worried? Not at all. So every year people go on vacation and they're eBay sellers and they really don't know what to do with their store. Some people just shut it down, shut everything down and just totally forget about it until they get back. I'm just a little bit different. Every day, I'm retired, so every day is pretty well a Saturday to me. I don't have a lot of commitments. So doing this for me is different than some people. But I wanted to walk through, I get a lot of questions about what I do when I go on vacation for longer than you know two or three days. So every year we go to Florida for seven days, Saturday to Saturday, and I use eBay time away. So I'm gonna walk through some of the things about how to set up time away. It's a lot better than what eBay had before. You had to change handling times and stuff like that. So I'm gonna walk through that and some of the help files that eBay has maybe help some people. And then there was something new this year scheduled listings a lot of people used to go on vacation and they would put a whole bunch of drafts and then they would log in and shoot off the drafts just to have some activity all week on their store while they're gone well they ebay now scheduled listing used to cost money to do like 10 cents a listing it's free now so i said how can i use this so i'm going to walk you through how i set up my store for time away and scheduling listings while i'm gone it worked and I'll walk through that I also met Kevin the postcard guy down in Florida he lives in Sarasota not far from where I was staying so we met for lunch for an hour or so and he has some amazing cards he's also going to come on the channel we're going to I'm going to interview him I guess what you want to say and talk about some of the things he's learned since 1996 he's been selling he has a channel the postcard guy if you want to see some really cool, real photo postcards, watch his channel. When he gets a box in, he goes through them. He brought one of those boxes to lunch. I looked through them. The first card I pull out, I'm saying, oh, my God. And he's just showing me some stuff. It, they're just amazing cards. So if you want to look at it, he sells them for really good prices, too. And they're really neat. So check out the postcard guy. And Kevin also brought me a couple cards while I was in Sarasota got a large letter postcard it's he pointed out it's posted 1946 during the war so that's a really nice card thanks Kevin for that one and then Barnum and Bailey Circus uh, summer home was in Sarasota and there's a big museum there a uh, Ringling brother it's um, the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey winter quarters Sarasota look at the card it's a linen it's got all the animals what else has got on there? It, they're in a cage and they're trained bears. Unposted linen card. These are two really nice cards and appreciate it, Kevin. Those are going to go on my little shelf back here. Just like the ones I got up here. Got a furry bear from Popeye and Nick from Picnic Postcards put, sent me one. I kind of stick them around and stuff like that. But those two cards he brought. So check out Kevin. And uh, he has a lot of knowledge. I'll bring them on later this year. We'll schedule something. First, I'm gonna walk through the time away, then I'm gonna walk through the scheduling, and then I'm gonna run through the cards real quick on what I sold, just so you see the variety. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you more numbers on how this week came out. I also threw it into the eBay calculator so you can actually see how much profit I estimate that I made on there. I sold 71 postcards while I was gone on time away. So at the end, you'll be able to see the numbers. So what is time away? Time away, eBay says, if you need a break from eBay and won't be able to process your sales as normal, you can schedule some time away. It's new to what it was before. You used to have to go in and change the dates, change the handling time, and then you forget about that. It was a mess, so, so they really cleaned it up. There is some caveats to this that we'll talk about in a second. And all this comes from eBay help pages. You can manage your time away in your time away settings, and I'll show you where that is there in a second, as well as scheduling how long you'll be away for. There is some parameters you have to meet. You can choose if you want to pause your sales, 
you don't want to do anything or allow them to continue. It just you'll ship them out later. You can also set an automatic response. If someone sends you a message, you can put a response in there, and I'll show you how that's done. Who we'll contact you through eBay messages while you're away? While you're on time away, you'll need to uphold your commitments to, to your buyers, such as fulfilling orders sold before your time away, start date, and responding to any open requests related to items sold before your time away start date. So it doesn't mean you can just walk away. If this is your full-time gig, I wouldn't just walk away if you depend on this money or if you want to, if you're really serious about it, I think you'll probably still log in and stuff like that. eBay fees such as listing related fees or any subscriptions fees you have will continue to apply during your time away. If you, by turning it off doesn't get you from paying eBay. When scheduling your time away, eBay says this, keep this in mind. If you choose today's date, a message at the top of your listing is letting people know your time away will display within minutes. It will take a few hours to update the estimated delivery type for your listings. If you choose to pause item sales, it will take a few hours for your listings to be hidden. Now I know with my size of store with 45,000 postcards that's around there, listings, it takes a while for it to go through and do it. It's pretty quick, but I always do it the day before about three o'clock day before I just put it like up so we we were leaving to go to the hotel by the airport Friday so Thursday three o'clock is when it was scheduled to go that way it gives it a good time to get everything synced up and stuff like that on there so you want to give it some time if you choose a later date your time away will begin at 12.01 a.m. on your scheduled start date and finish at 11.59 p.m. on your scheduled end time. If you allow item sales, your time away can be set up for 15 days. This is important. If you allow sales to continue, it's 15 days. If you hide your sales, you can go up to 30 days because some people go away for longer trips and stuff. So if you hide them and stuff like that, you should schedule your time away a start a way to start a day before your time off to accommodate any last day orders and end it a day later than you return so you get time to process and that's what I did here so I put it on Thursday 3 o'clock and I'm recording this the Sunday the Saturday the Sunday after I got back and I'm processing the orders now the funny thing is today is Father's Day tomorrow is Juneteenth 19th or Juneteenth day new holiday so I don't really don't have to ship out till Tuesday but you'll see here in a message when I said they would be mailed out I forgot about the new holiday that it rolled up pretty quick. So I, I got two things going on today with that. Whether you choose to allow sales or pause them, delivery date, they won't be updated for the following. Any second chance offers, auto accepted offers, pending counter offers, seller initiated offers accepted during time away, items with local pickup and in-store pickup as the shipping option, digital items, and athletic shoes eligible for authentic to see guarantee so you may want to change the shipping format or the handling times on these items your way so there's some things that there as you know we can't change if there's an offer on something we can't change the price and stuff until it stales out and stuff like that so there is you want to look at that there's some things that you might slip through and I had one slip through and it said I'm overdue for shipping it by three days now it was because it was probably an offer or someone pending and they came in am I worried not at all I'm running, I always run close every month on tracking and shipping on time because I ship some things in stamps and envelopes. I think the threshold's 95% to have that. One time I went under a couple times, they give you a grace period of 30 days to get it back up and it worked. So I'm never worried one item out of 71 I sold is not going to tank my store. So never fret about that. Things happen, and they know that. That's why they give you a little bit of leeway in the metrics. Now, with time away, there's two settings. You can allow item sales, or you can hide, pause them. You can hide your sale, your store so no one buys anything. You don't have to deal with it at all. When you allow item sales to continue while you're away, it's important to remember the following. Your listings will still be visible, and buyers can still purchase them. However, buyers will see a message at the top of your listings letting them know you're on time away. And what buyer reads? You know, it's sitting at the top of there, and there's so much on the page, you know, if they see that. But it's better to have something than nothing. 
excluding the instances above in which delivery dates won't be updated. You don't need to make any manual changes to your handling time since the estimated delivery dates will also be automatically updated in the shipping and delivering section of your listings to ensure you do not need to ship items while you're away. That's the difference from what it was years ago. You had to go in and change your handling time. Just think how long it would take me to update those in bulk edit and all those 45,000 listings. It'd be horrendous. I'd, I probably would just hit the store. But now with time away, it calculates and it does work. I don't do anything but you'll see here in a minute as I set the start date and the end date and that's all I do. And it automatically tells it it'll be shipped out Tuesday. And that's what caught my eye was Tuesday when I had that new holiday. When you pause your items for sale, remember the following. Fixed price listings will be hidden. This is where you hide your store. You don't want to deal with it. Fixed price listings will be hidden from search results and buyers won't be able to purchase your items. So if you're saying no sales and you thought you didn't pause it and you wanted to sell, go check this setting. You might have hit the wrong one. If a buyer previously added one of your items to their watch list or card and tries to buy it while you're away and won't be able to complete the purchase, even though it's in their card and watch list, they won't be able to complete it. They won't see a note saying that you're not processing until the time away date that you have so they can come back. It can take a few hours for your fixed price list to become hidden, so we recommend setting time away as far in advance as possible. After time away ends, it can take a couple hours for your listings to reappear and search results. Listings will reappear automatically. You don't need to do anything. A lot of people say when they are on vacation, they don't sell. Or when they come back and tank their store. I have never, ever seen that. I've never had a problem during vacation or whatever. This year, I think I'm about $100 less than last year. But 71 cards, I'm still happy. It's not, it's summertime too. So I always take a little dip here and there. But I've never seen where being on time away has caused me to lose any sales. Auction listings, when you pause item sales, buyers will still be able to see and buy your auction style listings, but they'll see a message at the top informing that your time away. The estimated delivery date will be updated in the shipping delivery sections. Now say you get back early and you want to end it. You can go into time away to set settings and cancel time away and set the end date to or set the end date to an earlier date and then hit apply. If you cancel away, time away, or set the end date today's date, it can take a couple hours for it here. So just remember, it takes a little bit for them to process this stuff. If you have a very small store, a thousand items or less, it'll probably happen pretty quickly. But the larger stores, you'll see it done in batches um, and go through there. So that's time away. That's vacation time for eBay. Now, all the people have other sites. That's another reason I didn't want to sell on all these other sites because everything's different. Etsy, I don't think you, can, you have to just close it or open it. Um, my Ko-Fi store, that little place with the sleeves and stuff, they have an open or close, but I didn't want to close it. I just put a post out there and say, hey, I'll ship this stuff out when I get back and stuff like that. I'm, I think HIP had a vacation where it'll still sell. You had to set the dates or something. But each site is a little different. If you're all over the place on sites, which I, I didn't want to do anymore, I'm just eBay in the little Ko-Fi store. But if you want to find out where time away is, go to your seller hub. And in the section selling tools at the bottom here, and I'll put it on the screen, it says time away. That's how I get to it. Or you can type time away probably in help and stuff, but this is how I get to it. Now when you click on it, you're gonna see this. Now it's even easier to time away, their little message. There's two sections here. There's schedule time away and there's automatic response. And I left mine in there. I haven't canceled that, that yet, even though the date's all right, I didn't turn it off. So the top one is where you schedule your listings, the bottom one is for messaging. And you can add a message and edit time away. Once you click on the first one about your listings, uh, delivery dates may not be selected on time, uh, on time away, may not update on time away, whether you choose or pause the items. But how you, you want to select what you want to do, so pause sales for 30 days at the top or allow sales is down at the bottom. Remember, for 30 days, 15 days. So if I click the first one, it asks you to put a start date and an end date in. And remember, you want to go a little earlier and a little later to accommodate your time. And if you come back early, you can go in and cancel this, walk you through the steps. So it's pretty intuitive, pretty easy to fill out on there, but that's how you set up the vacation. Don't have to worry about handling times or anything like that. You might get a few things with offers here and there, but I wouldn't sweat those on there. 
Now to set up the message to go out automatically, you can see my message here. I hit message on there and I want it to go out 8 to the 17th. So if anybody messages me about anything, a lot of them will say, oh, why hasn't this shipped yet? I put in mine since, uh, and there's a little bit more information as you'll see, I put in there, I'm currently unavailable and I'll get back to you as soon as I get back. All items purchased between 6 8 and 6 18 will be mailed out on Monday 6 19. And that's an error there because I forgot about the Juneteenth thing. But if you notice, I put the dates there. Now, a lot of people might not want to put that type of information there. I always have someone at our house when we're gone or whatever like that. So there's always someone at our house while we're gone. You know, no problem. Grandpa's here, Grandma, or whatever. And there's someone here in our neighbors, so I'm never worried about giving them the time and date, the dates that for here and stuff like that. But if you're don't want to do that just don't put that in there it, you can customize this any way you want now this after I did this screenshot here I went in and I canceled the automatic message I'm back uh, all together so that's how you do the messages and I put the dates in there because most of the message I always got on vacation is why hasn't this shipped yet and I tell them between these dates and this is when they'll ship and that kind of calms them down so that's time away it, it's very simple to do I wouldn't sweat it it, it does well. Now I don't do best offers, I don't chase offers, I don't do all that stuff back and forth so it might be a little different for some if they got a lot of offers up there. I, I don't deal with that. Then another thing with that scheduled listing, so I'm saying, how can I use this and test this? So what I did, and I went out and looked at scheduled listings. I never used them because there was always a charge for it and I was always home and stuff. But scheduled listings, you can start scheduled listings to start on a day and time you choose up to three weeks in advance. I said three weeks, that's cool, 20 days, 21 days. Allowing you to create your listings at your convenience and control the time they start and end. Now there's a caveat to this, listing times on ebay.com are shown in Pacific time. I'm central time. You can view the official time and up to date zone on the little link. Just go to the little tip here, type in schedule listings and it'll find us. But to schedule a listing when you're creating it, you go in and you get to the bottom uh, underneath quantity allow and there and at the bottom there you'll see their schedule listing just turn that on and when you turn that on you get this little box pops up you can click on that a calendar comes up and you put the date and it'll tell you it'll gray out the ones you can't do uh, after 21 days or whatever and then you put the time and the date but remember it says Pacific uh, Daylight Time now how did I use this how did I set up my store I said okay I can go out 20 days. I'm going to be gone for seven days from the 9th to the 18th. So I created this little box here and I said I want to do 30 a day while I'm gone. I want to list 30, schedule 30 listings a day. So if you're, if say you want to list, I was listing 30 cards a day is what I wanted to do. I said I'll list 10 more and I'll put 10 on each one of these days every day I do it for the next 20 days and I should get up to 30. So that, I just made a little spreadsheet and I just increased that number and I went across and if you notice I got 30, 30, 30 all the way to the 15th and I only put 20, 20, 20 at the end because I just didn't have time on there. But that's how you can use it. So every day these were going off. They're already done. They're, you know, uploaded, listed, and they were scheduled for these days and everything's good. So well, that's how I use schedule listing. I didn't do the draft thing where people put a lot of drafts and they got to log in and kick off the drafts. This will do it for you for free. So I use that. Now, there was another spin I was thinking. So a lot of people list seven days a week. They want to put activity on eBay and they want to get more listings up. The more you list, the more you sell. I said, well, what if I list 30 cards a day and I bump that up to 40 cards a day and for Saturday and Sunday, I can schedule out for I put five on Saturday, five on Sunday, Monday through Friday. That's 25 cards a day on Saturday and Sunday. And that way when Saturday and Sunday gets here, I don't have to list because they're already ready to go. So I get two days off listing. So I'm going to kind of, kind of start incorporating that into my listing thing is maybe I'll, instead of doing 30 a day, I'll do 40 and I'll put five on each day coming up across the week and do it for a month and just see how it works and then I don't have to worry about listing two days. So I, I like to list every day. I like to keep activity um, moving in and add cards to my 
listings. So that's a way you can use that free feature. So, but check your eBay time away help thing, scheduling listings, make sure you understand it, and it, it works. It works fine for me. I've used it uh, multiple times now, and not, not an issue. Even with the scheduled listings, not an issue. I haven't seen any bugs or anything like that that I know of. Now I'm going to walk through the cards real quick, not real detailed because there's a lot of them, and just show you the variety that's sold and some of the prices and at the end I'm gonna walk through the details what I estimate approximately what my profit was and what I cost are and stuff like that with the eBay calculator and we'll see what I made for the seven days that I was gone now one of the things that sold was this this is one of those 8 by 11 8 by 10 things and this is from the movie fame it was the dancers and this is already bagged and boarded and cellophane. That's my inventory number. That sticker is removable. It'll come off. That's my SKU number. But this 8x10, I'll put it in one of these. They, it fits right in there. That's what it's made for. And it'll go as kind of heavy as like I don't put do not bend or anything like that on there. But that's sold for $9.65 plus shipping. And you'll see that in the calculator because it's first class. So they pay for that. One of the cards I sold, this is... I like a, it's not one of those blue kino types. This is a, a linen. It's, I can feel it. It came out of a coupon pack. Sold for four to five dollars. And what was that? Short space transfer, some kind of church thing, stuff like that. And I sold the geyser, Yellowstone, four to five dollars. This is a five to six dollar card. Airview of Fort Myers Beach, which is about an hour or so south of where we stayed. The Falls, Newton Upper Falls, Massachusetts, four, four to five. It was a uh, under by the back. Next one is the Long Beach, California view, and this is the auditorium out there. And this is a uh, kind of a one of those ones on the edge of white border and stuff like that. So, but that's Long Beach on there. I sold a Navy print. This is what they're buying is the date and the name of the ship on the stamp and the cachet right there. 465. This is an interesting one. These are skiers in the winter, and that's that old man of the mountain rock. I think it fell down or something. I'm not for sure, but whenever I see this, a white border card, four to five dollars. This guy bought two cards. There are two ships sold four to five. This is the it says at home again, posted 1909, and then this is the Queen of Bermuda. Sold five to six dollars. Both of those sold for ten uh ten twenty. This is Riverside, New London, Connecticut. Just a view card. Be by the back. Four to five. This one sold for six dollars. This is the Ravens House, Randolph, New Hampshire. Posted nineteen forty nine. Not a real photo. This is the City Market in Norfolk, Virginia. This is from that Nash Nashville Hall, I believe. Nice card, and that sold between five, um, six dollars. Divide it back. This is a photo of a ship, one of those photos. This is the Coral Sea, around the 1970s. That'll go with the stamp and the label. That sold for eight fifty-five. I sold four of these prints, or three of these prints, for fourteen dollars. And this is the landing. It's a USS Landing Craft. So if those are sold, I'm sold out of those now. This is a Coconut Grove in Hawaii. Sold five to six dollars. Continental card, Coconut Grove. Aircraft carrier, John F. Kennedy. Continental card, four, 465. Exaggeration card of some fish. On the wagon, big fish. That's four to five. This was a shipwreck on Lake Michigan. I thought I would do better than it did, but it's a four to five dollar card. Divide it back. This is the Lafayette Square, Buffalo, New York, vertical card, posted 1950s, 4 to 5, car, 4 to 5. This is the Hinsdale Sanitarium, this didn't turn out to be what I was looking for in Sanitarium, it's too new, so that was 4 to 5. This is another print, gloss on front, matte on back, Hornsby, it's an older one, 465, NASA card, of a Matador missile shooting off. That was four to five. 
this card sold uh, for eight dollars this is the Bethany Beach Delaware so Bethany Beach is one of those beaches unposted crumb card this is the University of Delaware four to five it's got rounded corners doesn't really add anything to the value Tower Grove Park St. Louis posted 1910 four to five dollars Pasadena Six to seven dollars, I believe. That's sold on there. Here's the interior of a church, Christ, New York City. Home card, unposted, four to five. This is someone's bedroom, Edison's historic site. His bedroom, four to five. And here's another church, Naval Training Center. This is the Naval Training Center chapel, four to five. This is some I picked up at a flea market. I got it for like ten cents. Picked up a few of these. This is one of those first eight covers. They don't do that well, but this is Babe Ruth, and it actually sold for $4.65. This is a $5 to $6 card sold. It's a Storm King Highway Overlooking River, uh, New York. Not a real photo. So the, the, that one sold 5 to 6 This is Geyser Hill, Yellowstone. Lenin card, 4 to 5 Surfers. In Hawaii, going down Waikiki Beach, that was a five to six. All my Hawaii cards I usually start around five to six dollars. This is a marina, silver, just a few cards, some boats and stuff. Four to five. Here's a real photo of a dining room somewhere in Hilo uh, Hotel, Hawaii. That's a real photo, and that sold for fourteen to fifteen dollars. And that doesn't say what the stamp box is, but it's unposted. That sold right away. It was one of the scheduled listings as well. Here's the USS Nassau boat, 465. Aeroview Nazareth, Pennsylvania, home card, 4 to 5. Here's some guy standing there, home card, 4 to 5. Another boat, 4 to 5. This is the USS Missouri. Naval cover, this is the Eaton. There's the name, there's the cachet. 465 St. John's River Riverboat coming down the way. Four to five. Church in New York. Four to five. I think this is Daniel Boone. And this is Bowie. James Bowie at the Alamo. Oh. So it goes this way. And it's a postage card. Chrome card, four to five dollars. This is then Tasket Beach, Massachusetts, Chrome card. Four to five dollars. This is the USS Daniel Boone submarine color card. Gloss on front, man on back. Boat card four sixty five. This is a rocky coast in Lakeside, Ohio. View card nineteen eighteen. It's a white border. Then this is the um, Water Gap House, Delaware Water Gap. Four to five dollars. Divide it back. This is the US, uh, USS Tennessee print, 465. This is an Hawaii card, United uh, Airline issue, United Airlines, five to six. A church, Williamsport, Pennsylvania, four to five. Just a creek in Fairborn, Ohio, four to five. Another print, USS Prince Eugen, 465. Another Hawaii card. Vertical of a sailboat at Waikiki Beach, five to six. Eagle Nest Rock, four to five. Chrome card. Another print of the Oklahoma City, four sixty-five. Another boat, USS Oklahoma. That one's uh, chrome. One of these cars. This is a Ford LTD, 1973, four to five. Another boat, USS Chilton, four to five. Here's a hotel sold between eight and nine. It's Yarks Motel in Cherry Grove Beach, South Carolina. Got a little bit of dirt on the back. Still sold. Then one guy bought five of these. These are the prints. Gloss on front, matte on back. Uh, USS Cape Gollister. $21 sale for all those. This is the Grand Tetons. T Teton. Teton. Mountains, Idaho. Posted by the back. Four to five, and this is a, another six by four Continental naval ship. I got like 80 of these left. Pearl Harbor is what that is on there. So that's all the variety, and I did that pretty quick. You can always rewind, I figure, but 
I was going to pull the cards with you, but I'm sitting there 70 cards. That would have took a long time. So it was just easier to go through all these things than that. But the total, um, I had 71 cards that sold from Friday to Saturday. Basically Saturday to Saturday. Total dollars was four hundred one dollars and fifty cents. My average sale price was five sixty five, and so that's not bad. I I was gone, but I had the scheduling going on. I had time away going on, and I really didn't do much more. And everything I had no really bad messages or anything like that on there. I just got that one that says I'm overdue. I must have had an offer or something like that. I'll I'll deal with that. No problem. No returns. No disgruntled customers. Nothing. So I took this order and I put it into the eBay calculator I've shown before. So I'll put it on the big screen. And let's walk through these boxes and we'll see what I made. Now this is just an estimate. I didn't get real detailed on each one and I'll show you where I just kind of estimated a little bit. But I, I went conservative. So so the sold price I said was four, $401.50. That's the total for the, all the cards I sold. I'm treating it as one order. Now I did charge shipping uh, for the print, the eight by 10. So I put that in there, 545 I figured, for first class. Then the item cost. So what I did is I took what the cards cost me. Plus I added in 12 cents for each envelope. So I figured, and some of these are going to go in multiple cards in one envelope. But I said, you know what, I'll take 71 by 12 cents. Just round it there. So 1843 is my total cost of the cards and the envelope. And then the cost of the shipping... I just added in what it would cost for the um, the shipping was, and I can't run it up to forty-five dollars. So I just did seventy-one by sixty cents, and I added a little bit in for the eight by ten. So I, I figured forty-five dollars is pretty conservative. So those are the cost at the top, and I just did number of orders one. I have a premium eBay store. I'm top rated. I use eBay managed payments. It's not over. None of these are overseas. And I don't think some of these are promoted. Or what I so I just take the two percent. That should, cause I don't go over three percent if I ever do promote um, on there. So I just said two percent. Let's just say I did two percent on everything, and then donate to charity. No, sales tax. I put six and a quarter, which was my county, and so everything's filled out there. And the, really, what you want to key in on is item cost. So I sold four hundred one dollars worth of stuff. And with envelopes in the postcard, I'm only at $18. That's not too bad. So what did the end numbers come up? My eBay fees, $5,701. Sales tax can't do much about. So I made a total profit, $286.51. Give or take rounding and a few other things. So let's just call it 300 bucks around there. Which is a 70.4% profit margin. And people ask me why I do this. I just sold 71 cards and I put $280, $290 in my pocket, roughly, give or take here and there. I gotta take 13% ta taxes out and stuff like that, and I gotta buy some more cards. But that's not a bad deal. And people say, I want six times my money, three times my money. Well, these little pieces of cardboard with pictures on them from the olden days do pretty good. And that's why I keep doing this, and that's why I left my sales open while I was gone. So that's how you do, so I set things up when I go on vacation, or I'm gonna be gone more than one or two days, is how I, I, I set everything up. If you got any questions about this, check your eBay help, put it in the comments, and send me an email at contact at smpostcards.com, and I'll see if I can help you. I'm not an expert on all it, because I use it once or twice a year, but it's pretty straightforward. Don't be afraid to use it. And I didn't see any bugs this time. And my store does not stop selling during the vacant time away or after. I've never seen that. Some people have, but I've never seen it. Thanks for watching, I hope this helped you. Give me an idea what to do. Bye.